Now, these are the chambers here. The chambers here. There's 10 of these. Yeah. And each one of these chambers would be a, a burial place. A burial and a treasury as well. Ah, okay. Because even before the, ki the death of the king, they were used as a store where they keep the treasures. And after the death of the king, they, the treasures were used for the life after death. So this is like in Egypt. They would build these, uh, these tombs before the king actually died. Yes, exactly. Okay. If you're upstairs looking around at this field, you see stelae, stelae, all these obelisks everywhere in this huge field. Each one of them is the marker for a grave beneath. Only 5% of them have been excavated. Now, they have fully excavated some of these places, but you know who got here first were grave robbers. Many burial chambers had treasure rooms beside them. The grave robbers would make their way into the tomb, then cut a hole through the wall to get to the valuable ivory and gold next door. Imagine what you see is now an empty room filled with ivory tusks, uh, gold, aya, silver, everything that this king would represent himself with in the afterlife. This is how prosperous the Aksumites were. These burial rites ended in the 4th century AD when the Aksumite kings adopted Christianity and a Jewish relic they had possessed for centuries became their greatest treasure, the Ark of the Covenant. Rumors have placed this precious artifact all over the world, but this is the land of King Solomon's son, Menelik, and many believe he brought the Ark home. Legend says it's still here today, in this small church just across the road from the pagan tombs. Living inside that church is the guardian, a monk whose entire life is dedicated to the protection of the Ark and praying by its side. Ethiopians have been assigning monks this duty for almost 3,000 years. Indeed, in three millennia, no one has been allowed to see the Ark except the guardians. Not kings, not popes, not even heads of state. No one has been allowed inside. By the 6th century AD, 1,400 years after the Ark may have first arrived here, the Western world was in chaos. The Roman Empire had fallen, and Europe was mired in the horror of the Dark Ages. But the Aksumite Empire was at its peak, and just a mile from the pagan obelisks, their Christian king, Caleb, built a magnificent final resting place, a tomb that may have lured the relic-hunting Knights Templar, searching for the Aksumites' greatest treasure. I can already feel this is a much grander, deeper tomb than the others. Uh, this is the last, maybe, the last Aksumite king's tomb. Really? We have, which belongs what to the this? son of King Caleb. This is the room for the grave with three sarcophagus. Right. Maybe for him and for his wife and for his son or daughter. And one sarcophagus is different from the others because it's with a cross, with Aksumite hand cross. Huh. Carved in the end there. <sighs> We do have one Aksumite cross right here. It does look like a Templar cross. Exactly, exactly. But Templars were 11th century, but this is mm. even the Aksumite used in the coin in the 4th century AD. That's why we call it Aksumite one. This cross, almost identical to the Crusader symbol, predates it by seven centuries. It could be a coincidence, or it could prove Europeans were here looking for the Ark. Many claim the Knights Templar dug for it under the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and searched the ancient Jordanian city of Petra. They may have come to Axum as well. So why did the Templars come here? They know that through the legend, the Ark of the Covenant transported to Ethiopia. So they came here to search for the Holy Grail and for the, Holy, for the Ark of the Covenant. Mm. So they adopted some elements like a cross like this, which they call it the Knight Templars or the Crusaders cross. Like Fascinating. That. That's where this is from. Go on. Did the predecessors of the Knights Templar come here searching for the Ark, and did they find it? Or is the greatest treasure in Christianity still locked away in a small church in a dusty town? The answers may be lost in time, like the once great but now forgotten Empire of Axum. Everything in this tomb speaks to the height of the Aksumite Empire. It doesn't get any better than this. In fact, this king sees the Aksumite Empire at its height. After this, Certain factors contribute to the downfall. One, the Muslim armies end up cutting off the trade routes, the sea trade routes that the Aksumites have used for their great prosperity. It becomes a landlocked state. So all of these factors contribute to the decline of the great Aksumite empire. And what follows are the Dark Ages. 
coming up, we find an 800-year-old secret under this church. I'm speechless. You are looking at a boneyard. And later, an underground 9,000 feet straight up. You know what's awesome is that we got to come back down this <laughs> thing. Most of us living in a modern, secular world, we practice our religion conveniently, maybe one day a week at best, in places not so far from home. But starting in the 11th century, Christians here, and from places as far away as Egypt, made annual pilgrimages to this remote region here in Ethiopia, to a legendary church built within a mountain cave, where many came to worship, and many came to die. In the central highlands of Ethiopia, at an altitude of almost 9,000 feet, lies a scattering of tiny farming settlements. But nearly a thousand years ago, this area is thought to have been a magnet for sick and dying Christians, who came here searching for a miraculous cure, or a peaceful end to their suffering, in a mysterious burial site near a lake of healing waters. The road is very bumpy. No, this is really bumpy. Our guide, Fukru, led us to the holy site that lured thousands here, a church reputed to float on water. And so you're saying that this valley, what I'm seeing now as a, a remote village, just yes, a few villagers, yes. this would have been thousands of people, a kingdom. Yes, imagine what, like, thousand years ago was mm -hmm. uh, lots of people settling here, settling here. In 1087, this was the center of the Christian kingdom of Yemrahana Christos. According to Church Chronicles, he commanded that a church should be built on top of a holy lake. Wow, that is quite a hike. That's a hike. So that's the cave there? This is the cave. And the church is right inside. Just there. Incredible. Some believe the king was guided to this isolated spot by a vision. But the cave was also a practical choice. It shelters the church from the elements, preserving it for almost a thousand years. Look at this location. You climb all the way up here. I mean, no wonder they thought this was a sacred place. Inside the cave, isn't it? All inside the cave. Incredible. Inside the gated enclosure that covers the mouth of the cave is the church, the king's palace, and a graveyard for thousands of pilgrims who died here. So this building here is the church. Oh, yeah, this is the church. The church was built up in alternating levels of wood and plaster mixed with stone chips, like a layer cake. But today, there's no sign of the lake of mystical healing waters that lured pilgrims from hundreds, even thousands of miles away. Unless you know where to look. Oh, there's a door here. If you look at it. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so that's the water underneath. Yeah. This is all wet underneath yeah. of here. Yeah. Some believe the original lake was actually swampy ground and the church foundation, a framework of timber or bamboo that evenly distributed the weight of the building above, a technique known as grillage. The groundwater trapped beneath could then be accessed through hatches like this one. So the legend so is true. Uh, this is really floating on uh, a yeah. secret lake. Yeah. So we can Holy see water, if you will. Huh? Of course. Even if this muddy water has no special curative powers, the church itself receives thousands of visitors a year and is still in active use today. So we had to shut down filming temporarily because there's an active service going on right behind this fence here. It's actually a baptism of a, of a young baby born in the, in the village. So we stepped away out of respect. 